OV podcast, Thursday, NCAA tournament day, opening day of baseball. You got everything going down in Cincinnati. We'll talk a little baseball today, plus a Thursday program. That means the final segment of the show is a little wrestling. So we'll do wrestling every Thursday as we approach WrestleMania. It is the OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone on the tour, QFM 96. Sam Grooms off today. He's in Cincinnati at the baseball game. And I think Vegas is coming back to the show here in a couple of weeks. It's Ohio versus everyone. We do it all on this podcast if it's Ohio sports and the big national stories from Buckeyes to Browns, Bengals, Blue Jackets, Cavs, Guardians, Reds, Buckeye basketball, all the national stuff, like I mentioned, we do a little Cavaliers as well, so we mentioned that too. Remember, subscribe, like, follow, and share. We do have the brand new YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Want you to subscribe to that. When you do, leave it in the comments and just say, I subscribed. We'll pop you up and give you a little shout out. The channel is growing. It's been out less than a month, so we appreciate you, especially uh, everyone of the just new to the show, or if you're a Menace fan and come on over, we appreciate it. If you're on Menace to Sports watching right now, you can jump over at any time. Watch videos of the show from the past. Remember that sports memorabilia package, just a couple more days to get in on that. The Joe Montana, Jerry Rice autograph helmet, the Gail Sayers stuff, the Buckeye gear. Tons of uh, different memorabilia. You got some sports cards in there. Got a CJ Stroud rookie card we're going to give away. So we're going to do a bunch of giveaways. But you got two days. So you got to get in. Remember, like, subscribe. Remember the super chat going. If you're watching on Meta, remember the stars. And if you're hurt at work or in an accident, let attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you at warforyou.com. Smack dab, kind of in the middle of spring practice. And they a lot of talk about the quarterbacks, and I think that's going to be the main focus. Because really, when you look at all the positions heading into the spring practices, what were your questions with this Buckeye football team? With everyone coming back, with the biggest impact safety coming over, a big running back coming over, you know, with Henderson, the wear and tear, he hasn't been completely healthy in the last season. What has been the big question on this team? Now, you could say the right side of the offensive line. That would be 100% correct. But the answer we're looking for in this conversation is the quarterbacks. And a lot of buzz. We were talking the other, Julian saying looking really good in spring practice. I don't know if you go in that direction with the young kid and go three years with him. But definitely a conversation I have. A, how did we get to this point with the Buckeye quarterbacks? Because I get it with Kyle McCord, and Kyle McCord, and I know people are going to give me a stat guy, and I know they're going to say, well, he didn't turn the ball over. He had touchdown passes. But was there a point at any point last year, and maybe a certain game here or there, where you left a game and thought, holy crap, Kyle McCord, man, I can't wait to see this guy two years. Because we we – Thought coming into the season, it was just a big weight to Michigan. This team's going to get better offensively. We have the weapons to beat Michigan. All we got to do is beat Michigan. We're in. Some people thought even if we lost to Michigan, we're in. It That game came down to a couple of plays, whether you want to blame Kyle McCord or not. But how did OSU get to this point as a program where we're relying on Kyle McCord and then Kyle McCord leaves and then a transfer comes in, Will Howard? And maybe because it's not Kyle McCord, we're so happy that Will Howard's here, a guy who can scramble a little bit, get some yards with his feet. And I think maybe it's more kind of like a political thing, how when you have a politician and you don't like him and you go, well, I don't like the other guy because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for this guy because I just don't like the other guy. Maybe that's it with Will Howard, that we've convinced ourselves that we do not like Kyle McCord at all. So that Will Howard now has become even better than what we thought. You know, kind of coming in, we've kind of built him up to a guy who does different things that Kyle McCord does not do. So in our mind, we've kind of built that up. We built Will Howard up to be so much better than Kyle McCord. 
when the reality is, is Kansas State was moving on and Kyle McCord, or not Kyle McCord, Will Howard coming back, coming back as a backup, right? He wasn't coming back to Kansas State. They had a vacancy. And we kind of waited, and I don't know what the negotiations were when it comes to the NI, the transfer portal in quarterbacks, but there were Dylan Gabriel, uh, Cam Ward, who signed after Will Howard. I mean, that's the guy I wanted was Cam Ward. Would you feel differently about this season if Cam Ward was here? Poll question today, by the way. Who do you want to be the starting quarterback in 2024? First game, who's it going to be for you? So I tell you what, Devin Brown is still lurking in the shadows. Still, we will find out after the spring game after they do that post-game press conference, at some point we are going to find out who the leader in the clubhouse is. If I am Ryan Day, I'm probably going to keep it an open competition going into the summer. I guess the question is, when Ryan Day goes over his depth chart, is a freshman, incoming freshman quarterback going to even get a shot? Is it going to be a three-man race? Is it going to be Will Howard? Is it going to be Devin Brown? And is Julian saying going to get into this at any point? Is it going to be an equal competition? Or with Will Howard, grad, Howard graduating, Julian saying, we're saying, hey, sit back a year and you're going to have two years as a starter. But the question is, how did we get here? How did Ohio State for back-to-back years have these options at quarterback? And just in general, I think this program has dropped the ball at the quarterback position. Because if you go back to when C.J. Stroud was here, remember, Justin Fields came in, transferred from Georgia, needed a quarterback, he was the guy. He came in, he was fantastic. We had two years from him. C.J. Stroud, remember when he was recruited, C.J. Stroud, four-star guy. There was another four-star guy from the state of Arizona, Jack Miller, and that was kind of the quarterback competition that C.J. Stroud won eventually. But as good as C.J. Stroud is in, in the NFL, in the pros, he was good. We knew he was, or in the in college, he was good. Pros even better in college. He's one of those guys who blossomed in the pros and not in college. And it happens sometimes where guys just explode on the scene. Even though he was the second overall pick, we saw it once in the Georgia game. Where it was, wow, where has been that, where has that guy been for the last two years? And a near miss against Georgia, but he showed us in Georgia that, yeah, I wish we saw that guy while he was here. The other, the guy who balled out and he balled out against Georgia. But when CJ was gone, it was Devin Brown and it was Kyle McCord. And how does a program like Ohio State? Get to a point where that is your option at quarterback. And that's the that's the problem I'm having where, where we went into a two-year stretch with Kyle McCord going to be the starter, him and Devin Brown battling out, and then our best option is Will Howard coming in. And it goes back to what I was saying before. Maybe we just didn't like Kyle McCord and what he did for the offense, that Will Howard looks great. And I wonder what people would think before his daddy got involved, you know, Kyle McCord's dad. Would you feel more comfortable? Let me hear you in the chat. Would you feel comfortable if Kyle McCord was coming back and he would be our guy, played in that Missouri game? And something tells me in my head, if Kyle McCord plays that Missouri game, we beat Missouri. That defense balled out. Kyle McCord, being a quarterback that started every game, can sustain some drives, keep that defense off the field. In that Missouri game, that Buckeye offense did nothing. And that defense finally ran out of gas. But that defense was balling. So how would you feel if Kyle McCord State beat Missouri 
and that had everyone coming back like they do now. Your complete attitude would change because Kyle McCord's dad poisoned the well. Because Kyle McCord's dad came in and handled it the wrong way. And he wanted to turn the media and make the fan base be the bad guy. And we are threatening Kyle. and Adults who, what, what are you tweeting uh, anyone for anyway? Sending direct messages like that. But he wanted to poison the well. And then the, the media went out and some of the podcasters, some of the writers said, oh, he left because the fans were too mean and C.J. Stroud was close too. And I'm sure with C.J. Stroud, no one likes that stuff, right? You're a 20-year-old kid and you look at your DMs because they're probably looking up chicks on the DMs. And they look at their DMs and they go, who is this dude sending me this stuff? And it, it gets you in a in a in probably a dark place. So Kyle went through it. And then, uh, excuse me, CJ went through it. Then Kyle went through it. And then Kyle's dad poisoned the well, wanted more money, wanted the guaranteed spot. And like Ryan Day mentioned, we don't do guaranteed spots at Ohio State. So I don't think in the in, going forward with this program, I don't think they're ever going to be in a place. And I think it's it's state of mind, almost top priority now where whether it's the transfer portal or it's just getting better recruits that we leave ourselves in a situation where Kyle McCord and Will Howard are our options. And I'm not, listen, this is, I haven't seen Will Howard play as a Buckeye. I would think that the talent level, obviously at Ohio state to Kansas state is a whole different level. I think the coaching is a different level. I am not trying to, say anything negative from Will Howard, except for the stuff we know, that he was at Kansas State, and Kansas State wanted to go in a different direction, and they didn't want to keep Will Howard. Now, is he going to come in and be better than Kyle McCord? Yeah, I think so. Just because of the things he brings to the table that Kyle McCord just couldn't do, and that's scramble for a first down. That's a big one. How many times in college football, look at J.J. McCarthy. I think he's overrated. I think, and we talked about this the other day, I think people are overvaluing him. I think the media machine is working overtime for this guy. I don't know why. I don't know why the media is so in love with this guy. Because to me, he's Christian Ponder 2.0. And J.J. McCarthy, great college player, great college quarterback. But what he could bring to the table, he could scramble for the first down. What did Justin Fields do? He could run for the first down. What makes these guys special is the multi multi dimensions of a quarterback. Look at Caleb Williams right now, and when you watch his highlights on film, it's him scrambling around, running around. I don't even know if watching him last year is probably not a good representation of what he can be as a quarterback because it was playing catch up football. USC's down. We need to come back 7 7-0, 7-7, 14-7, 14-14. A constant battle of playing catch-up for USC. But I, I know this about Caleb Williams. I know he can scramble for the first down. I know Jaden Daniels, scramble for the first down. Drake May, scramble for the first down. C.J. Stroud showed you. Yeah, he can get to the first down. Bryce Young had that athletic ability where he was a runner but he could if he had to go for the first down. So that's why I think Will Howard will be better just from the standpoint of when defenses were preparing for Kyle McCord, they're preparing for a guy on third and five who is going to drop back and pass if it's a passing play and got to throw the ball who's no threat to run. You know what's coming at you. And for some reason, and I know we talked about the Purdue game before of Devin Brown, you know, they put in the package to have Devin Brown. Obviously, Ryan Day, the staff knew. I got some questions about Kyle McCord. Because you're going in late in the season, and you're putting a package for another quarterback in, and then he gets hurt, and then he can't fulfill that. We can't put that in. But that makes you wonder what was going on behind the scenes. And we've talked about it before. I'm, I'm watching on Saturdays, the weekends. I'm watching old Buckeye games and 
Watch him if you still have him. Comic Court coming to the sidelines and Ryan Day just losing his mind in frustration. So I think Will Howard will be better. My whole point of this conversation is we cannot let us at a program with high expectations like this. Let ourselves get into a situation where a Kyle McCord's starting quarterback. And it was it was not horrible. Dude lost one game. But it wasn't elite level like Ohio State has had in the past with Haskins, Fields, C.J. Stroud. There was a big drop off from those three guys, three first round picks to Kyle McCord, a guy who, I mean, if if, if Kyle McCord came out for the draft at the end of this season, where do you think Kyle McCord's going in the draft? Like legit. Fifth round because he played at Ohio State? And a year at Syracuse, is that going to bring him up the draft charts? I don't know. Like legit, legit, legit question to ask yourself. OV Podcast, the tour from QFM 96. Sam Grooms joins me in Cincinnati. Be back tomorrow. Finkus is coming back here, I think, the second week of April. It's Ohio versus everyone. Buckeyes, Browns, Bengals, Blue Jackets, Cavaliers, Gardens, Guardians, Reds, Buckeye basketball, all the national stuff. Once you subscribe to the channel, like, follow, share, get in on the conversation on the chat, get in on the super chat. Every Thursday, building this podcast, we have not even been up three months and running. We appreciate all the subscribers on the new YouTube channel. You got in on the sports memorabilia drawing. We appreciate you. We appreciate you watching the show. We're still going to be on the Menace channel, but at some point we need to do the specialty shows that we are going to have. So appreciate you. Remember the Super Chat. If you are on Meta, got to get a metal st- Meta star going if you're watching on that platform. We do it for you every single day when we come back. Opening day in baseball. Kind of looking at the Guardians this year. Looking at the Reds. And the huge advantage that both these teams have is the divisions they are in really suck. And you kind of have to ask yourself, did they do enough? And did anyone do anything in their divisions to stake claim on a clear-cut number one? Because I think that's, I, I don't know. The Twins won the division last year. But I think the Twins lost more than they brought in. And are they just relying on every else, everyone else just sucking and not improving? Because you would think sooner or later those Tigers with their prospects would be ready to go. Interesting question. Opening day in baseball. Hope you enjoy it. Of course, to me, you do opening day with the Padres and the Dodgers and you're playing in Korea. I think it's stupid. I think opening day to me is Cincinnati, and that should be the first game every year on ESPN. Cincinnati's baseball, they have the parade, they have all the traditions. To me, baseball really dropped the ball when they started doing the Sunday night game. They started playing in Korea, really dropped the ball for some money. But we'll talk a little baseball. We'll do Indians Reds next on the OVE podcast. We go to war for you. At Sugar Schnarr Trial Attorneys, we don't back down. Accident? Call us today at 877 war for you or visit war for youcom for a free consultation. Know your rights because results matter. That's 877-WAR-FOR-YOU. 877-WAR-FOR-YOU or visit war for youcom war for you war for youcom Hazmat Ohio is a firefighter-owned and operated all-hazards training company specializing in custom safety training for your company's needs. They offer corporate CPR, AED first aid, confined space rescue standby, spill and emergency response, and they can train firefighters, industry safety teams, and employers. Call 740-507-8802. That's 740-507-8802. Thinking of buying or selling a home? Give Lauren Torgerson a call with Next Home Experience. Lauren has been servicing the Columbus metropolitan area for 10 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer, considering building, want to upsize or downsize, Lauren can help you with all your real estate needs. 
Get a free market analysis for your area and get started working on making tomorrow's dreams happen today. Call or text Lauren at 614-296-3952. 614-296-3952 or email at TorgersonLauren at gmail.com. OV Podcast, second segment of the show, Thursday, opening day in baseball. Sam is down in Cincinnati. It's the Tor QFM 96, Scott Torgerson. Monday through Friday, every day, 3 o'clock. Remember, subscribe to the new channel, youtube.com, the little at sign, Ohio versus everyone. Two more days for our sports memorabilia package. Everybody who subscribed to the show gets in a drawing. We do pay off. Uh, Danny won the one show uh prize we i dropped it off to him it was the joe dimaggio signed we got the chris carter thing in route uh got a lot of prizes so this is what we're giving away we are giving away this montana and rice helmet autographed if you're watching on youtube on the new channel you can see it there we got the ya tittle mini helmet gail sayers 16 by 20 autographed certificate, see the Beckett in the corner, and this cool for Buckeye fans right out there. Look at that beer can. You hang that on the wall there, have some Buckeye sign it. Beautiful. What's not to love? So subscribe to the show, the new YouTube channel, wherever you're watching it. Remember to like, follow, share, follow us on all our social media pages. A little later on, second or third segment of the show, we do our Thursday wrestling segment with BJ Sugar joins us talking wrestling, WrestleMania. Great raw over the weekend with raw showing up in chicago some good stuff so if you're a wrestling fan remember every thursday and we got a wrestlemania show that's probably going to drop i think we're going to do it this weekend so we'll break down the card maybe they'll add a couple of wrestling nuggets or a few few more matches but i don't see anything big on the card so we i, I feel safe that we can do it this weekend uh opening day of baseball we're going to get to that a couple of quick notes before we do that uh, reading today, Buckeye-related things, and we didn't get to this yesterday. Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach, mentioned after practice the other day that the defensive line will rotate more Buckeyes. I thought, especially from the defensive end position, this is something they probably should have done last year. When you have guys who are not reaching seven sacks, who are five-star guys, and listen, they're getting paid. Guys are getting paid good money to produce. Now, Jack Stoyer came to the dinner table hungry in that Missouri game, and he brought it. But these guys need to bring it. I thought they were too too kind with their playing time last year. This is Ohio State. You're telling me you don't have five, four-star guys and that no one's stepping up in practice to get more snaps from these guys if they're not bringing the pass rush? Defense strong, pass rush. There should be a Buckeye in double-digit sacks every season. Uh, interior of the defensive line, my call, fantastic. No complaints. Interior did their job. Got a pass rush. I'm with Larry Jones. Get the rotation going. Keep these guys fresh. They're, the Buckeyes are going to make the playoffs. You want the big guys ready to go when the time is right. And I think you need to think about that, too, when it comes to time management. Of managing these guys, making sure they're fresh. They're playing way more games than they ever before. Big 10 title, boom, they hit the playoffs. You don't know where they're going to be seated. A lot of football to be played late in the season now. So right move by Larry Johnson to do this. Got to rotate more linemen. Love the move. A couple other, a couple Big 10 notes. Talk a little bit about baseball. Uh, I'm not a baseball expert. Sam played college baseball. I watch it. I like it. We could talk about it when something's the Otani stuff has made baseball interesting again and it takes a scandal. But kind of all the fringe sports, if you're talking hockey, if you're talking, and baseball's not a fringe sport, but it's just not talked about a lot on the radio. It's not, baseball's not a game where you're going to break down baseball and it's going to be entertaining podcast material unless it's a Guardians and Reds sole podcast. I don't even know if they have those, do they? Like a Reds and Guardians podcast? Maybe they do. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. A couple notes. The Cowboys thinking of bringing Ezekiel Elliott back. And a guy I think they should bring back who's been clear to play. And and by the way, with Zeke, they're also looking at Dalvin Cook, who is done. Dalvin Cook is done. Played on two teams last year. 
younger guy, but the Vikings knew he was done. Went to the Jets last year towards the end of the year. I don't know. If you want to bring Dalvin Cook in, minimum, see what you got, fine. I think Ezekiel Elliott, if he wants to keep playing, it would be a good chapter to end with the Cowboys. It's fine. The player that everybody is missing out on, and this is a guy who's low cost, big reward for your franchise, and I'm surprised he's not signed, is J.K. Dobbins. He's been cleared. He can start working out. He's going to start visiting teams next month. To me, J.K. Dobbins is a guy where the injury, listen, the injury bug has hit him big time, and it's wiped away years off his career. But he's still young enough. They say he's 100% healthy. He's a guy that I 100% would take a flyer on, and I think it will be worth it to him and for the team. He can then go hit free agency after he accomplishes some, you know, accomplishes a full healthy season and then go get paid in the open market. And then the team pays a low risk contract to a guy with tons of incentives in it. And then you get a guy who's just balls to the wall. Cause I think JK Dobbins has not been able to show who he really is little spurts here and there with Baltimore, but a healthy JK Dobbins. We saw what he did in college. We've seen what he can do in pros at times. He just hasn't been consistently healthy. Hopefully with a clean slate, new team. If I am the Dallas Cowboys in desperate need with not a lot of money, J.K. Dobbins is the guy I'm bringing in at running back. Not Ezekiel Elliott, not Dalvin Cook, J.K. Dobbins. If I'm taking a chance on anyone. Now, granted, I could see, hey, we'll bring in Ezekiel Elliott. He'll be healthier. But from a home run threat with a playoff team, who would you really have rather have is your starting running back? A healthy J.K. Dobbins, and I get it. Injury concerns there, can't stay healthy, or in Ezekiel Elliott, who stays healthy, who doesn't have very much in the tank. He's not a number one. I'm going J.K. Dobbins. One quick note before we talk a little baseball. Remember, next segment we do wrestling. B.J. Sugar joins me as the road to WrestleMania has begun. Remember, subscribe to the new channel. YouTube.com at Ohio versus everyone. If you're streaming Apple, just hit that like there on the Menace to Sports page. Appreciate it. And tell us in the comment section too. Tell us in the comment section that you've subscribed. We'll give you a little shout out on the podcast. Uh, One quick little note before we do baseball opening day. That's where Sam's at today. Love opening day in Cincinnati. Part of baseball history. Tonight or tomorrow night, my Cubs are going to be on TV. Um, Caitlin Clark offered a contract by Ice Cube's Big Three. Now, Ice Cube's been on the Torgan Elliott show several times. He's called me and Jerry his two favorite elderly white guys. That's a compliment. Uh, I like what Ice Cube's doing. I've watched the Big Three League. Uh, listen, it's never going to be a big breakthrough sport. Uh, having it on ESPN is a big win. Caitlin Clark should not go and play in Ice Cube's League. Ice Cube is a smart man. Ice Cube has made news. People, some people probably didn't know the big three exist. You should be listening to the Torgan Elliott show. You would know. But a lot of people don't know that the big three exists. He gets it on the map. But And someone out there criticizing Caitlin Clark. Oh, she couldn't play with these guys. It's a different league. And no, Caitlin Clark should not play in it. Caitlin Clark's dream and goal is to go to the WNBA and win championships. And that's what she should do. She is not a sideshow. It's not a carny show. It's not Johnny Manziel playing in the Arena League. She's not a tourist attraction. She's one of the top ball basketball players in the sport in women's basketball and go to the WNBA and kick some serious. And by the way, about Caitlin Clark, people are criticizing her because she's yelling at the ref, because she's fiery, because she's pushing people, because she's in people's faces. Funny how no one has any issue when Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant did that. And I didn't at the time. I think that's a legitimate argument is Kobe's competitiveness is the reason why if I needed to win a game and I needed to pick my team, I would take Kobe over LeBron. Of course, Jordan over everyone because of the competitive nature that they wanted to rip your heart out. And that's what I want from my top player, from my winner. And when things aren't going well with them, they're going to show emotion on the court and they're going to get in the rest face and they're going to get in other players face. 
So because Caitlin Clark's a woman, she can't do that? I love that she's that type of player. Now, I hate that it's against Ohio State this year, but I love her having that fire. Keep it going. Don't listen to the haters and people criticizing her because she's a woman. She can't have fire. She can't be competitive. She can't get in people's faces. And you might, oh, she's shoving people toward and she's getting in the ref. Yeah, she's a great player. And that's what great players do at times. On to baseball. Opening day in Cincinnati. And listen, I'm not a baseball expert. We'll talk baseball on the podcast when it's relevant, when stuff's going on. We know what moves the needle. Football moves the needle. But when you look at these teams, they are in the perfect divisions for being kind of where they are at. Because the Guardians, great pitching staff. And to me, the success of the Guardians this season is what they receive for Shane Bieber. They have done a great, you go back to Mark Shapiro, uh, Antonetti. They have done a great job of building teams, trading off pieces getting great pieces, uh, young pieces, and then having growth with the team, making a run in a not-so-great division, having their way with teams. One of the best managers in baseball history with Terry Francona, who's not there. So a couple of things with, with the with the Guardians. I want to call them the Indians all the time. Uh, what with Terry Francona gone and a new analytic manager, how that will look, a young and really good pitching staff, great defense, need a bat. So I think they would be fine trading Shane Bieber, but don't do it kind of when they, when they trade Shane Bieber, because we know it's going to happen. Look where you're at in the standings. And if you're within striking distance, because I think really the only team that's good is the Twins, and I think they're a 90-win team. The Tigers have been waiting forever for those young kids to start playing and living up to their potential. By the way, Torkelson, you're my guy. You're We're very close. We're like brothers. Um, but if you suck, I disown you. Um, and by the way, my last name's Torgerson. I know it's different. It's screwing around. So look where you're at because they need a stick. Good defensively, they need a stick. Get the young stick, these major league ready bats for the Guardians. And I think you're going to see a couple in the lineup early part of the today in the season. And if not, they'll be called up soon. But they have a hitting issue and they have Shane Bieber just dangling there for a team. Uh, I think Indians are a little bit better than 500, or excuse me, the Guardians, a little bit better than 500. Uh, But in that division, Twins, Tigers, Guardians all have a legit chance, but the Twins lost a lot of stuff. They lost Sonny Gray, who's a leg- was a legitimate Cy Young guy last season. So Twins made some moves, got a good team. Buxton's going to be in the outfield this year. It'll be interesting how many times he's hurt now. They've kind of protected him last year with Tucker out in center field. But we'll see. I think that division's very winnable. Just questions with the manager questions with the bats and it's a big one with the bats uh reds nl central this is a team that really understood the rules of baseball last year bigger bases more stolen bases took advantage uh ellie de la cruz gets a lot of press because he was so exciting coming in he's a flashy player losing mclean and the injuries they've had in spring training hurts them a lot. The good part of this, Craig Council's not Milwaukee. They lose their best pitcher. Uh, Pirates are the Pirates. The Cardinals were god-awful. But boy, if their first baseman and third baseman can get back to magical form, they'll be better. But the Reds have a legitimate shot now. Can Hunter Green develop another pitch? Uh, He can throw it really fast. He's good. Uh, Frankie uh, Montas, will be opening day starter tonight. He's a candidate for comeback player of the year. So I think they've done good. They weren't splashy. They're kind of relying on their players to grow. Hopefully India can hit like he did his rookie season. But when you look at who else is there, 
Now, I'm going to pick the Cubs. That's not a homer pick. I just like their pitching. They got pitching depth. They can go eight guys. They got the probably probably the best group of prospects in baseball, if not top three. There's question, but but with the Cubs, you look at that lineup, and there's no one that, you know, on that, when you look at their depth chart, their, their, no one, Justin Steele's great, but you look at their, and, the, and they have rotation or the closing issues and bullpen issues. But I look at that team and I go, okay, nothing jumps out at me, but nothing jumps out at me as a weakness either. For the Reds, I'm just not sure if these young guys are going to develop to that level. But the Reds should be in it. The What happened with the Reds, though, in it, exciting baseball, folded down the tr- stretch, so did the Cubs. With the Cubs' failure down the stretch is what got them there, defense, no bueno. Defense sucked at the end of the year. And their bullpen. So e- these both these two teams, realistically, should be in the hunt at the end of the year. Take a quick break. We come back with wrestling. We'll talk more baseball. Sam will be at the game. We'll do it tomorrow. Don't worry. We'll give you we'll give you baseball. We're still trying to get Merck on the show and Merck back in the fold, especially with baseball. Dude's busy. He's got a real job. But we'll talk a little WrestleMania, the road to WrestleMania. Every Thursday, final segment of the show, we do it with BJ Sugar. He's with us next on the OVE podcast. Hey, let me tell you about my guys at River Valley Restoration. If you have a project, I know it can be overwhelming. Let them take the stress out of it for you. Give them a call, and it doesn't matter if you've got a huge project, small project, or somewhere in between. They will take care of you. Free in-home consultation. They do roofing, siding, gutters, windows, doors, decks, attic insulation. I love that they do bathroom and kitchen remodeling. They can get pricey, but not at River Valley Restoration. The project manager is going to talk with you work with you, picking the materials, picking out everything, taking you through the progress every step of the way, keeping you informed. I love that. At a price that you can afford and you know you're going to get a great job. 10-year workmanship warranty, double the industry standard, and a 50-year roofing warranty. They offer financing as well. 740-785-5000 or at rivervalleyrestoration.com. If you're having an event, everybody needs to be safe. Medical emergencies can happen any place, anytime, anywhere to anyone. You have to be prepared. Event Medical Staffing of Ohio has highly trained medical staff. They provide life-saving care when needed. Basic and advanced life support care to events all across Ohio. Festivals, concerts, fairs, motorsports, any sport you can think of, including film and television. They provide training programs as well, including first aid and CPR. So give Event Medical Staffing of Ohio a call at 740-403-6739 or at eventmedstaffing. Final segment of the Thursday show on the OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The Torque, Sam Grooms in Cincinnati. Opening day of Major League Baseball. All Ohio sports. Subscribe to the new YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Thursday on the new channel. And we're, of course, on the old Menace to Sports as well. We'll remain there. Thursday, we go to war for you, warforyou.com. Let attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you. BJ Sugar, what's up, man? Hey, Great brother. How are you, man? Spring Good. break week. You look tan. <laughs> you look tan. Are you there with the kid, or did you bring like five senoritas with you? Oh, yeah. No, no. This was a kid's trip. <laughs> nice. Nice. Spring break. Yes. I got you. I, dude, I got you. Spring break. You know, it's the same week. week, right? You know, you kind of you lay back, you do it for the kids. So yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> so what, do you, can you disclose what foreign city you're in or are you in a Gahanna hotel room? Yeah. <laughs> they already sent me back. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> kid, we're going to Holiday it. Inn and Gahanna. <laughs> I was overserved the first night here in Cancun, and they already sent me back. <laughs> oh, you got kicked out of Senior Frogs. Hey, let's start it off where we left off from last Thursday. We had, and and what did we talk about on the pod? We wanted something, the setup to get to violence. So yeah. we left Raw, and it was a one-on-one, Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. And really, when you think about it, what was your thoughts of of it was kind of like mind manipulation, would you say, at SmackDown between the Bloodline and Cody Rhodes? Would would that how you how you sum it up? Yeah, I, that's how I would sum it up. I mean, now you don't know, you know, his, Cody Rhodes' former tag team partner um, is he going to be with him or turn against him? Uh, you've got a lot, you know, you've got a lot of crossover storylines with this. You've got The Rock heating up the rhetoric and obviously the violence um, in this narrative, which 
exactly how we talked about it last week. We wanted this to get to a fever pitch. We needed it to get personal. We needed it to get bloody, really, to show the seriousness of the narrative. And we're and, we're, and because of that, I'm not really sure which way it's going to go right now. Yeah, Rock's not bleeding, by the way. And that and it was just no. like a good little setup of Roman Reigns in the bloodline playing a mental manip- manipulation game with Cody, but Cody brought Jay Uso and Seth Rollins to the table, and that's how they closed SmackDown. Now, Raw in Chicago, one of the biggest Raws in history when it comes to attendance. It's like, legit was one of the biggest attended Since, Raws. Yeah, 2019, yep. Yeah, so it, it was a big one. Cody Rhodes and Rock. Rock shows up, not advertised. Rock shows up, doesn't say a word, has his hands behind his back. Says something to Cody Rhodes, and you think it's over for the show. They interview Rock. They interview Cody. What was said between you two? And at the end, they we kind of got what we wanted. A lot of violence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. And it got personal. He even brought Mama Rhodes into it with that belt oh, yeah. right at the very end, putting the blood on the belt. So this thing's really, uh, the Rock and the company have really ratcheting up the heat on this. They're moving away from that PG narrative into yeah. now a more more attitude era type narrative. And I think that the powers that be, uh, Ari Emanuel and, and, and Dana White, uh, you know, executives in the company who know that that blood and violence sell, uh, I, th- I think that this is part of the turn that they want to bring into the WWE as part of the intensity, bringing that heat back. Not PG heat, but at least PG-13 heat. Do you think they're stealing a little with the, with the Mama Rhodes, a little bit of the Christian, the Mama, the Mama Wayne, kind of getting the wives involved, the family. I think really when you look at A and AEW, what Christian's doing, bringing in dead parents, bringing yeah. in mothers, uh, he is really getting heat with that, and it's working so well with Christian. Do you think The Rock and the Mama Rose maybe just taking a little piece of that? Because, you know, wrestlers take finishing moves and maybe taking a little bit of that and going, all right, I got to get over as a bad guy. Let me just take a little piece and bring the mama involved. Possibly. I know that they were bringing out Dusty early on, talking about the silver spoon with Cody. And since Mama Rhodes is still alive, it seemed like not a bridge too far to try to rope her into the narrative. But I do think that they're savvy enough to see what's working in other places in order to incorporate it in their own narratives. Boy, will that ever leave with with, uh, Cody, the whole Dusty stuff? And he probably doesn't want it to leave. I don't think so. You know, Dusty was an icon of the uh, of the industry, and Cody will always have that shadow until he's a champion himself. Until he finishes the story, he'll always be the one that sort of got this uh, the the gold the silver spoon and and couldn't live up to his dad's uh, expectations. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, Rock not advertised for SmackDown this week, or is he advertised for SmackDown? Because it really doesn't he matter is. at this point. Yeah, I, I don't think he is, but. In the road to WrestleMania, I could definitely see him making an appearance. Yeah. And then Cody Rhodes, since he's not on that program, Rock can go wherever he wants. We don't think we'll see Cody, but maybe we will. Yeah, I think all bets are off now in the road to WrestleMania, particularly after what happened on Monday night. I think you're going to see some crossover and some surprises as we as we move to WrestleMania. Two of those surprises were where that truck was parked at the end of Raw, showing uh, sort of fore- foreshadowing uh, John Cena's and Steve Austin is possibly guests at WrestleMania. Well, I think that's what they're teasing. If the bloodline wins, then you may see bloodline rules, and then you might see a John Cena in Undertaker. That'd be incredible. I think if you see that, I think the roof goes off in Philadelphia, and I think it truly would be one of the best WrestleManias that we've seen if they're able to bring, if they're able to to rope those the, those guys into a a, a, blood, a bloodline rules uh, match. And it could be just as simple as the bloodline cheats night one and Seth Rollins and Cody Rose lose. It could be as simple as that. It could be as simple as, uh, you know, a, you know, interference and someone gets pinned or someone, you know, Drew McIntyre comes in and causes a di- diversion, so to speak, that allows the pin. I mean, you could go a lot of different ways and still, and, and, and let me throw this at you. Okay. Let me throw this at you for night two. What are the possibilities of Cody and Seth winning night one? I think you'd have mm-hmm. to, I don't, I don't know if Ross and uh, Rock and Roman are going to put one of those two guys over, but let's just say, let's just say Cody gets the pin on Roman 
and they say, oh my goodness, it's going to be like that tomorrow night. I think that would be a legitimate way if Cody Rhodes pins Roman Reigns to get the hype for, for night two, right? Yeah. Could you see a either a masked man and they debut, debut him on Raw or he comes out because he's not part of the bloodline, MJF debuting in WWE? Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I think one of the things we're hearing about MJF is that his injury is worse than anticipated, and that's one of the reasons why he's been so silent, so dark, because he can't – it's not like a Seth Rollins-type injury where he could even get in the ring. That's at least what we're being told uh, is the reason why MGF, M- MJF has gone uh, gone so dark. But that would be amazing uh, if, if they were able to keep him under the wraps, keep him healthy, and bring him into WWE, because that, that's what they've been talking about is that the WWE is going to sign him, and one of the reasons why MJF has been off that AEW roster. Well, they took him off the website, and they've done that before. And I gee, I hate seeing them go to the well every time MJF needs time off. We're going to take him out of the roster. Then he's going to come back. We fired him. He's going to come back, whatever it is. I hope they're not doing this time, but they're not even selling his merch. No. Which no. tells me if, if you were MJF and, and, okay, I'm going to take some time off, I still want to make some money selling merch. Absolutely. And he's one of the top merch sellers for AEW. So if he's, yeah. he's he's not benefiting from that, what's the reason to stay on the AEW roster? But but they always do a big surprise the Monday after Raw, and that could be Sheamus. I don't know if that counts as a big surprise, but it definitely could be a masked man comes in and screws Cody Rhodes. Opening night, Monday after Raw, here comes the music. Music hits. There's MJF. I screwed you, Cody Rhodes. You were my best friend. You left without me. You left me there. Now I'm here. I'll never <laughs> let you finish the story because my it's my story now. I mean, I, I like that narrative. I like that, and it, and it it leads into another another narrative as we move into SummerSlam. Yep. And then you could have Rock versus Roman Reigns. You know, you could yep. have that end, and Rock says, "Now that Cody's out of the way, now it's me and you." Well, and I do think that one of the things that's going on with these live shows is that in anticipation of Rock potentially being there, I think ticket sales are up just in general for the live events. I mean, they're always good, but I think they're really at uh, pumping at capacity, uh, particularly if there could be a a, a Rock sighting at any of them. Yeah, and and I tell you what, the 22nd in Columbus is going to be a banging uh, Raw. But I I could see that where MJF comes out. Because one thing people have to remember about Cody and the finish the story in the heavyweight championship, because his dad dad never won the WWE championship. He was in polka dots with Sapphire, and I think he won the Intercontinental Championship. When Cody was in AEW, it was Cody's call to lose that match against MJF to never be able to challenge for the world heavyweight championship. It was Cody's call not to win the AEW heavyweight championship. So maybe to Cody finishing the story is just actually a storyline. Yeah. I mean, you never think, yeah, you, you think about that. I mean, one of the things that's compelling about Cody and his story is, is chasing the belt. The question becomes once he gets that belt, what's the next story? Uh, does he stay? Is, is he continue to be a baby? Probably yeah, I mean, a babyface champ. Yeah, because at that point, he's not going to be turning heel. So it's going to be a babyface champ uh, with, you're right, if, if The Rock is still part of the narrative, that would be the natural uh, the natural next, next step to take on the, that fight. Well, they would have Rock sit out for a little while and then challenge him. for. So you would make Rock Cody SummerSlam. Yeah. Or yeah, that even would be- a middle in between of money, money in the bank, Rock versus Roman winner faces. Cody. Well, speaking you, of money in the bank, but you, I mean, but you could also have you could also have a in between. Let's say AJ Styles beats LA Knight. You could have guys like AJ Styles challenge. You could have Solo Solo Sokoa challenge Cody. You could kind of do bridge challengers to mm-hmm. take on Cody Rhodes up until The Rock on SummerSlam. Then you could have even if Cody beats The Rock, you could then have Royal Rumble Roman Reigns come back. Because I don't think Roman would mind an extended time off. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I, <laughs> I don't think he minds that at all, no. and he enjoys playing the role that he's playing now without too much sweat in the ring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you did mention you brought, and I, I stole your thunder there. You're going to talk Money in the Bank. You know what is going on with Damian Priest? I mean, the Money in the Bank piece just seems to be week after week. At this point, uh, you know. I don't even see a compelling surprise match. 
uh, with Damian no. Priest. It's kind of lost its luster. I think you're right. The time to do it was against Gunther. Uh, it, 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 that would have been a marquee match, him versus Gunther, Priest versus for Priest at least. But clearly, WWE must not feel that he's ready for a primetime match like that because they've not let him cash that in for a long time now. Well, I, I could see this. I could I could actually see the Monday after, the Monday Raw after WrestleMania. Seth Rollins banged up, has a banger match with McIntyre. CM Punk gets involved. Uh, if he gets involved, he'll probably help the Seth Rollins or maybe hits both of them and then Rollins just falls on Seth or on, on McIntyre. Maybe it's something like that. But Seth comes up. He's bloody. He's limping. He... Finn Balor comes out, they get into it a little bit, and then comes Damian Priest, cashes in the money of the bank. Kind of like Dolph Ziggler uh, when he cashed in in New Jersey on, um, oh God, who did he cash in on? Well, he cashed in a Monday after Raw, Alberto Del Rio. When he cashed in Alberto Del Rio, and it was a huge pop. This wouldn't be a huge pop, but I could see the Monday after WrestleMania is always a big show, and I could see Damian Priest then cashing in the Monday after WrestleMania on a hurt Seth Rollins. Seth could take some time off and then come back and then challenge and get the belt back if he'd like. Yeah, no, no, and and you're right. And and from a narrative standpoint, they might be waiting for that. Well, why waste it when they could actually utilize it as a crutch for one of the hurt stars to get some rest? And then you and then you don't make Seth look weak and lose the belt. It's he was injured after WrestleMania, hurt his knee again, his back is bad. Damian Priest comes out with interference with whoever, and you know, one of the bloodline or not the bloodline, but judgment day comes out. They're fighting with Seth. Then he gets hit over the back with a you know, with the briefcase, then they ring the bell and they pin Seth. No, not like this, you know, you know. <laughs> Then Pat the, McAfee's calling them scumbags, and you yeah, know. I was gonna say the question is: is is are, are, is somebody gonna come over and uh, you know clothesline McAfee at some point here? <laughs> yeah. I you actually know, love, wrestler announcer. My actually favorite part of Raw was not the Cody Rock; it was the Seth Punk and McIntyre promo. Yeah. I thought it was well done. Oh, I thought it was well done too, and even Punk referencing Vince McMahon when he oh that talked, was so like, good. McIntyre being his boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Punk knows how to pull those strings. There's no question on the mic. He knows how to get those zingers in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it got physical then. Seth gives one back to McIntyre for what he's been given uh, to Seth the last couple of weeks. So that's good because you know at some point now with Punk on commentary, hates both guys. Rollin said something to Punk. Punk said something about his wife. You're in high heels. Are you with McIntyre? They all three hate each other. Listen, you know that CM Punk is going to get involved. And maybe it goes the opposite way. Maybe CM Punk gets involved and helps, helps yeah. McIntyre, who you don't know which way that's going to go. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think with Punk, you know, the question is, is he still going to be hurt, not going to be able to participate in WrestleMania? My guess is that they won't rush that injury to make sure it's fully at full health. It'd be difficult to have him come in and participate in WrestleMania and hurt and re-injure that, which could knock him out for a whole year then. Now, we don't know Friday what's going to happen if Grayson Waller and uh, Austin Theory are going to qualify for that, uh, was it six-pack challenge or whatever for the tag team titles. I could see our last note um, till next week, or at last note until the WrestleMania show this weekend. Jade Cargill on the Grayson Waller effect. Could that be a WrestleMania you know, Jade has been foreshadowing something big, and she's been telling everybody and her fans, you know, wait for SmackDown. Uh, something's happening. Something big's happening. You got to support me. We're here to make money. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what they're prepared to do with her on uh, on SmackDown. Uh, what, what's your prediction in terms of what would be a great surprise for her to do? Well, I think I think Becky and Naomi will battle for the tag team championship, the women's tag team titles. I think they, the setup's there for that. Um, so I think that goes away. Tiffany Stratton's a huge star. You'd like to see her in, and maybe she comes out and challenges. I just don't know in this amount of time if there's a match for Jade Cargill. I think Jade Cargill is a special guest on the Grayson Waller effect. I think that's a way to bring her in, make an announcement, and I could totally see Tiffany Stratton saying it's Tiffy time and then making I, – I don't know if they – built Jade Cargill up uh, or Tiffany Stratton enough for you to really think she could beat Jade Cargill, but that would be a good 
opening opponent for Jade Cardgill of Tiffany Stratton to weigh. But I see Tiffany Stratton, a big star right away, taking on a Bianca Belair, taking on a Bailey, an Io, Io Sky. If Io is not the championship, Jade Cargill goes, hey, you're the you're the bitch who want, lost the title, so I'm going to be the bitch or whatever she, you know, kind of uses. I don't know. Can they say bitch on WWE SmackDown? Well, I, know, I mean, yeah, they, 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 they've said term. some other words which are worse, so I, I think they can. Yeah. <laughs> so she kind of likes to throw that I'm the baddest bitch on the planet or whatever on the way. So, it, you know, I don't know without Charlotte Flair there what they could do to get Jade Cargill to the next level. I think the women have a problem of if, of kind of like name, you know, you know what I'm saying, BJ? Of, okay. If Bailey wins, who's the opponents for her coming up? Okay. You could do a rematch. I get that. Jade Cargill down the road. Okay. I get that. And then if uh, either Gore, either Rhea Ripley or Becky Lynch of who the opponents are coming at the women's, side is really watered down where it's only two or three people. And then yeah. you just, I, I guess Liv Morgan can make a run. If on either side, you could see her on you the next. Had to bring stars event. back for, yeah. Who are one stars before. Yeah. And, and kind of, and, and kind of re- rekindle or call them. In the lineup. I mean, Tiffany Stratton, it would be a shame if they're building her up to main event level. If the push stopped and getting squashed by Jay Cardgill. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I think Tiffany Stratton is, is is needs needs to continue to grow into that next rung. Um, we need Jade back up there. That would at least then give some parity between Rhea Ripley, uh, Bailey, Becky Lynch, um, uh, Sky. I mean, you know, so so you're right. We we we've got to build the uh, we've got to build the uh, the corral in order to get a, an effective narrative going again, or at least one that's not. Sometimes I feel like the the narratives are either getting dragged out with the women. Or they're almost like getting rehashed. Nothing new is coming to the table. Or incomplete or just non-existent for a few weeks. I, I, If I'm booking Jade Cargill, I book her like they booked uh, Brock Lesnar. Where Brock beat The Rock within like six months. You're like, no way this new guy's going to beat The Rock. And then he went over on The Rock. Rock was leaving. But it was a good way for them to put yeah, oh, yeah. Rock over well, at a quick part of time. I see her doing the same thing. She will beat Bailey for the championship within six months. Within three months. Yeah, and I think the contract that she signed is probably going to make it that she's they're they're going to they're going to effectively make her the next star. Unless uh, and then the challenge will be Charlotte Flair, Jade Cardgill, SummerSlam. Yeah. And that will be the ch- the the challenge. And then hey, who knows what's going to happen WrestleMania could all change again, but I think kind of that's where we're heading. All right, so you ready for this weekend and uh a little WrestleMania. We'll run down the card, what we think yeah. for each match. And then when we run down each match, we will pick a winner and we'll see a uh, rally uh, t- total. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you, Tord, you beat me last time at the Rumble. So let's see if we, uh, <laughs> yeah, if we can do it. Start my pencil. All right. Well, have fun in Cancun, dude. And we'll do our, just a reminder, and it'll be on the new channel. If you're a wrestling fan, subscribe now, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. And we will do our WrestleMania special coming this weekend. And, of course, next Thursday, uh, we will talk about what happens on Monday, Monday Night Raw, as we head to the road to WrestleMania on this podcast as well. Warforyou.com is the website, folks. Heard at work or in an accident. BJ Sugar, thanks, man. Appreciate it. You got it, Torg. Have a good one. Talk to you this weekend. All right.